Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to go over the process for loading uh, sounds into sound decoders. You know, there, there are several different approaches that manufacturers have adopted. Loke Sound and uh, Digitrex, they allow the users to upload sounds to their decoders. And you can download the sound package from the manufacturer's website, and then uh, you can upload those sound packages to the decoders whenever you want. Now, that requires certain things. They require a proprietary uh, piece of hardware, like this Look Programmer uh, device here. With Digitrax, it's their PR3 or PR4. So there's a little added cost in this. Okay, so what I want to do today, though, is take a look at the Loc Programmer approach for uh, the Loc Sound decoders. And then in a follow-up video, we'll look at Digitrax and their approach with their PR3, PR4, and their Sound Loader program, which they both of these companies produce their, their Sound Loaders for free. A lot of people don't completely understand the difference between programming a decoder and loading a new sound package to one. And they are different. Uh, because basically what you're doing is um, you're loading the sounds to the decoder so that it can be stored in uh, memory uh, on the decoder. Uh, it's a type of flash memory basically where they're able to store it and you know repeatedly uh, uh, record new sounds to it. I mean, you're basically, you download the sound package and then you can put it into your software uh, that they provide on your Windows-based computer and then you can send it to your uh, programmer and it will upload it into the decoder itself. And that's, you know, pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of downloading it, giving the command, and up it goes into the decoder, and you're up and running with a new sound. And that's really one of the great values of this. Uh, it allows you to update the sound package as the manufacturers release uh, new ones. And, you know, Loke Sound uh, uh, USA have been very proactive about recording new sound packages. Okay, let me point out one thing about Loke Sound decoders. Now, when you purchase a new Loc Sound decoder, they basically come with one sound project already installed. And as far as I know, it's a German diesel uh, locomotive uh, sound file. And that allows you to, you know, put it into your uh, locomotive, test it, see if it works. And then you can go ahead and download and, and install a new, uh, a new uh, sound project in it. Now, most dealers that I know of will install whatever sound package you want, as long as you ask them up front when you purchase the decoder. If you do not specify a sound package when you order a, a Loke Sound decoder, chances are that that manufacturer is just gonna send you the basic uh, file that is installed at the factory, okay? You have to ask up front. So make sure if you buy a Loke Sound decoder, Ask the guy up front, you know, will you upload a sound package for me? And then, you know, you have to tell him exactly which one you want. And then they will typically do that. I know that Brian Bianco at Streamline Backshop will do this. So, you know, check it out. Ask the questions. Don't be disappointed. And then, you know, have to try to find somebody to do the uploading for you after the fact. What I want to do now then is I'm going to focus back down here onto the workbench and we'll take a look at the uh, setup that I use for my initial programming and uploading sound packages in decoders. And then we'll move over to the computer and we'll go ahead and get started with uh, taking a look at how it's done. Okay, let me point out that I covered all of this in my August Model Railroader DCC corner column. So I would encourage you to go ahead, take a look at uh, the August issue as well as uh, the uh, video here. Okay, so basically this is the setup that I'm gonna use today and one that I, I uh, often use uh, if I'm gonna program a decoder before I put it in a locomotive. So what I have then is my loc programmer uh, device, and this device works in tandem with the Loke Programmer software on a Windows PC. 
Okay, it only works with Windows computers. I have no idea whether it will work with a Windows emulator on a uh, Macintosh. Uh, you might be able to ask that question uh, online at one of the forums on groups.io. But at any rate, basically it's, you know, a little black box and uh, the power comes in through this connection here and it just plugs in right here into this barrel plug socket and then the USB connector uh, attaches right here and that uh, connects to your computer. So your connection to your programming track or or to your programmer like I'm using here is through this removable terminal block where you can connect two wires or there's also a couple of little uh, uh, connectors here where you could either solder to or I've used clip leads in this case. Okay, So I've got a red and a black clip lead going down and connected over here. Okay, so that's all it is. Okay, this is just a black box. It has a couple of LEDs right here uh, that flash when a signal is being sent out to the decoder. So that's your indication that it's working. Okay, now over here, this is the ESU uh, decoder tester. I've shown you this in the past in a previous video on, you know, how to test decoders. And, you know, it's got various interfaces, you know, it's got the 21 pin, it's got the uh, 8 pin, a 6 pin uh, connector, it has an uh, individual wire terminal block here, so you can hook things up that way, it's got a Next18, and a uh, Plux22 connector. So there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, test their decoders. And uh, on this particular one, I'm using a 21-pin uh, uh, Sound 5 decoder, and it's a Sound 5 DCC. And I'll uh, point out the difference between that is in the new uh, Sound 5 uh, uh, releases, uh, basically there's two different kinds. There's the European version, which is specific to their various, uh, in addition to DCC, it also has the capability to program uh, them for use with their various control uh, systems over there. Um, in the U.S. and North America and in, in, in Australia, they have, uh, uh, where DCC is predominant, there is the Sound 5 DCC version of their decoders. They're not set up for a lot of these other uh, European, uh, predominantly European formats. Okay, so I've got that plugged into the 21 pin outlet and then I've got the two wires for the speaker which come connected already over here connected to the speaker outlets on the terminal block. So that's basically uh, very straightforward. So I can sit here, I can program the decoder, I can watch you know the little lights flicker here. Also the, f the lights on the board uh, will flicker uh, showing me that it's uh, receiving programming commands here as well. So you get a double indication that it's actually working. Okay. So, you know, it's a pretty straightforward setup that I use uh, to do this. You don't need to do this. You could install the decoder in a locomotive, put that on a programming track, and hook up your clip leads directly to that, and you're good to go to do your programming that way. Okay, so that's basically how it works. Let's go ahead and I'll move over to the computer and turn it on, and we'll get started with seeing how to do this uh, uploading process. Okay, so here we are. I've got everything all powered up, and this is the opening screen uh, when you first power up the uh, ESU Woke Programmer software. And you can see here you have several options. You can modify settings on a decoder. You can perform a complete update. You can create a new decoder project, and you can open an existing project. So you might want to, by that, what they mean is you can take a, a project that you've downloaded and make the modifications to that and save it, you know, as say Southern Locomotive, you know, uh, 2480 or something like that, so that it is unique. And then you can open that project again, make changes to it and upload it to the, to the decoder after making uh, whatever modifications in CV to the CV settings that you might want to make. So that's what that means. Now, typically, I just go ahead and zip past this one and close this out. And that leaves me right here, okay? So the first thing we wanted to do is go up here to the programmer and let's read the decoder uh, data that's already on that decoder. 
Okay, so you can see I clicked on that and it's reading the decoder data. And uh, it's going to come back with all of the CV settings and uh, specific information about that decoder. So you can see the address is uh, address three, all of these kind of things. We'll get into this in a future video uh, when we're talking about programming low sound decoders, not uploading the, the sound files. And that's the basic difference. I mean, programming a decoder means you're cha making changes to things like the, the decoder address, the sound volumes, and, and whatever other CV settings that there might be. With uh, loading a sound file, it's simply a matter of bringing it in and sending it to the decoder so that you can make modifications at a later date. Okay. One thing that you can do here is click on the information and it's going to tell you about what's already on this decoder. Now, it just so happens that I uh, have already uploaded a sound file to this decoder as part of my regular testing when I get them. So basically, I've got a Fairbanks Morse uh, 38D six-cylinder uh, locomotive uh, uh, file already loaded. It's diesel. You can see that. Um, let's go ahead and uh, go back uh, to the basic decoder information. And you can see up here at the top, it's a Loksound 5 DCC decoder uh, project, 128 megabytes, and or megabits, excuse me. So that's how much you've got to work with. Now, what are the options then? Well, let's say we wanted to upload a new sound file to this decoder. What I can do is go in here and either click on Open File, or we can go up here and click on you know, Open. And uh, I'm going to do it here because it's easiest. So I'm going to look for my loc sound. I've already downloaded them and put them into a folder listed as version 5 to keep them separate from the version 4 decoders you know, that I previously downloaded. And I'm going to pick down here an EMD 16-cylinder 567BC decoder package. And let's open that. So it's opening the project, okay, and you know you can see all of the different functions and settings that are already included here, okay. Uh, let's take a quick look at the information, and here you can see that all of the different functions are outlined, uh, what they are, you know, F1, F2, etc. And then let's click on the general information. Uh, you can see this is uh, available for use. It's got a Jeep 7 in there already. Nice little picture for a rock island. And uh, if you look, you can see it has a description of the locomotive type. And uh, right here, all of the different locomotives that it was used on. So there's my F7. And it was recorded from an EMD Jeep 7. So you can see all of these little notes about how you use different functions are provided in this uh, particular setup. And if you go on down, you can see there are different uh, sounds uh, or horns provided. So you can select uh, any one of these 15 different horns. See, it's 0 through 14, so you, that's great. For me, they use Nathan M3s uh, on the uh, Southern for these. So it'll be a, a one, CV 163 would be changed to a value of 6 for the Nathan M3. And you can go on down the bells. All of that information is there, okay? And I'll show you in a second how you can change that. So I'm going to go with a number six, a Nathan M3. And let's see what else is available down here. Well, that's about it. The project information and version, all of that kind of things are available there. Okay, so let's go on over here uh, to the sound information. Now, this is where I mentioned earlier that there's lots of different sounds available in here. And it gives you information on the various sound slots. Now, sound slots are one of the ways that ESU, that they use a sound slot for a particular sound. So you have to know which sounds are assigned to which slots. So they pretty much lately standardized on sound slot one being the prime mover, sound slot three being the uh, horn, you know, fairly straightforward. Um, the bell sound here, they've got sound slot four for the bell and so on. So there's all of these different sound slots 
And when you, if you use this in Decoder Pro, then that's something you need to know because the sounds are only identified there by the sound slot. So if you need to change the volume of a sound, a horn or a bell or whatever, and, and you're using Decoder Pro, you're going to need to know which sound slot that is because, you know, you have to change the volume of the sound slot and it doesn't tell you what it means. Okay, but over here on this side, you can see this is the sound library. So if you go down here, let's take a look at all of the different bells. And you've got Australia, Germany, and the U.S. And you've got diesel and steam bells. So, whoops, let me turn that off. And click on this little function button here to turn the sound off. That's how you test it. So there's all different kinds of bells. Let's listen to the gong. Okay, so there's all the different types of things you can do with the gongs uh, or bells. Uh, there's blowouts, breaks, you name it. There's all kinds of sounds, and there are ways for you to select these. Now, in this video, I'm not going to get into how to make those changes. That's something for a future video because, you know, I don't want this to be a one-hour uh, uh, presentation here. But at any rate, so you can select these. You can go down here, click on the function button, and hear what it's going to sound like. Uh, once it's installed in your decoder. Okay, so that's the basic information on those. Now let's go back to the decoder. Uh, let's go ahead and at this point, uh, let's go ahead and, and, and save it and upload the uh, sound package. Okay, so how do we go about that? Well, if you look here, there's this one that just writes the decoder data. So that means it's just going to make changes to the CVs. It's not going to save your sound or upload your sounds. Uh, so I'm going to cancel. Let's move over to this one. Write the sound data. But note, right here, in addition to writing the sound data out to the decoder, you need to make sure that this is clicked, write decoder data. That allows you to make those changes to the CV settings, such as the type of, 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 of horn that you want uh, to be activated on the package. So let's click on next. And you noticed it said it could take 30 minutes for this to upload. So I'm going to turn off the recording at this point and we'll start it back up when everything finishes loading. Okay, so after about 30 minutes of sitting here watching the little, uh, the little uh, indicator move along, it finally finished uploading. And um, one thing you can then do is go over here to the driver's cab and that allows you to test your decoder. So click go and let's uh, turn it on. I'll hold the, uh, I'll hold the, the microphone over next to it and we'll blow a few uh, toots on the horn and the, give a, the bell a pull. Okay, so as you can see, I got the uh, I got the sound okay, uh, and it's got the uh, correct rhyme mover and bell and all of that good stuff. And I've clicked the stop so that it's off. Now let's go back in here to the decoder, and I'm going to go to CV 163, and we're going to change that to a value of six because I'm not sure that that value for the horn got uh, changed correctly. So let's click right, and that should write it to the decoder and change it. So let's go back to the cab and click go. So you, you can see right away we can test this. So let's go back real quick and I'll go back to the read and write again. Let's make this seven, which is a slightly different one. 
Then uh, let's go ahead and move it back, write it, and we'll go back and click go, and I'll let you hear that one. Well, I'm not so sure that I like that one any better, so I guess I've got some experimenting to do with uh, the different versions of this horn that they, they have available in the package. But that just gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do. So you can upload it, you can test the, uh, test the sounds uh, very quickly, make changes using the uh, uh, function to read and write CVs, and then, you know, once you're happy, you can finish and complete the job. So let's do that. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to save it and click on the save up here. And you can do that up here, save or save as. Let's do that one. We're going to save this as, and I'm going to change this to Southern uh, Jeep 7 2180. Okay, so that's where it's going to be saved right off. Now let's go back and quickly take a look and you can see that right here, it got saved as Southern Jeep 7 2180. So in the future, whenever I wanted to make modifications to this particular decoder in the locomotive, Jeep 7 2180, I can bring this one back up, read it back in, and I'm good to go. I can then make changes and reload the, the uh, or make changes to the decoder CV settings, and that's all there is to it. Uh, we'll get into some more depth in the future, as I say, on using the various uh, uh, programming functions uh, for this particular uh, decoder for the Loke Sound 5 decoders. Okay, that pretty much wraps things up with uh, how to use the Loke programmer to upload sound files into your uh, decoders. So I encourage you, give some thought as to whether or not you want to go this route. Obviously, if you have a lot of low sound decoders installed in locomotives, you might come out ahead having one of these. This will allow you to reload decoder sound files whenever uh, the uh, folks at Loke Sound come out with a new version for your specific locomotives. So, you know, that's where it is very, very convenient. If you're just a user and, you know, you're happy with the files that come with your installed locomotives or that, you know, whatever you can get from a dealer to load for you, then you might not need to go this route. And I'll be showing you in a future video how you can use the Loke Programmer software without even having this device. So, you know, that's something for a future video. And keep watching for that one. Take it easy now. Have a great weekend, be safe, and we'll see you on Monday with a new video.